Hello, and we're on the Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research Centre page. And tonight, with Paranormal Peeps, I'm talking to the amazing historian and he looks after Derby Jail, Richard Felix. How are you doing, Richard? I'm very well, thank you. Ever so well. Yeah, no problem. It's my busy time now, of course. It's the season. It's Santa Claus time for me. Halloween. Oh, bless you. <laughs> You say so busy, aren't you, at the moment? Yes, yeah, I have to be honest with you. Although, obviously, you know, with with COVID and lockdowns and various things, it, I haven't been busy, but it has picked up. And at the moment, fingers crossed, um, I am still avail able to do ghost walks um, and night vigils, so long as we, you know, stick to the uh, to the COVID, well, not COVID friendly, COVID unfriendly. Rules, you know, uh, so yeah, I'm quite busy at the moment. I've got quite a few events uh, coming up over the next few weeks. Thank goodness. Oh, that's fantastic! I'm pleased that you can carry on because it keeps yeah. changing all the time, doesn't it? Oh, and yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, if I can just get through Halloween, oh, and, yeah. and the week after, and the week after, because I've got quite a, quite a bit on that uh, the first week of November as well. But if I can get through that, you know, we could we could we can survive a bit longer. <laughs> Oh, oh wow! So you started off in records then? Yeah, that was a long time ago. Well, yeah, yeah, I was a record dealer for 30, 30, 30 I mean, my dad started selling records in uh, nineteen twenty-six. I mean, yeah. gee, and they were records, by the way, not cylinders. They were they were seventy-eights, as we you know, um, oh, seventy-eight God. revs per minute. Oh my God. Uh, I never sold 78s. No, it's 40, 45s and LPs with me. Uh, but I sold more more pop records, single, because we specialised in singles. Um, sold more pop pop singles to Derby Derby people in general than than anywhere in Derby. Um, yeah, mm. it was uh, it was good. It was good. And then all of a sudden, I had a midlife crisis, <laughs> <laughs> and it all changed. But I'll be honest with you. It's a very, very good job I did, because the record business was was a, it was over. It, it really yeah. was because it, it had all um, it had all been become sort of well, CDs and 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 then downloads and 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 you know records as as such were all, well then non and I specialised by then in. in in oldies you know people still people still wanted records and i specialized yeah. in getting hold of oldies for people and then i couldn't get them either so it was a rather good job i i went in a different direction i think you could say yeah Big that's time. a good time, eh? yeah. that's right so uh well kate went into the historian side well yeah i mean yeah you see i've always been obviously always his i hated school I loathed and despised <laughs> every day that, from the day they, my mum and dad forced me to go, to the day I forced my mum and dad to let me leave. Really, I hate, I hated it. But I, I, if anything, I quite like history. I was no, I no, I was very good at PE and gymnastics and all that sort of stuff. But other than that, no, I just un, unacademic me, um, to say the least. Uh, but history, yeah, I, I was I was all right with history. But my passion has always been military history, um, battles and uniforms and swords and oh, yeah, that's 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 my been always been my hobby, my my passion in in, in life. To be honest with you, uh, and then then I became chairman of God help me, Derby Tourism. Would you believe? I mean, people laugh. That's Derby. Brilliant. Derby tourism, you must be mad. You want to come to Derby? Apart from uh, and I started, Derby. Yeah, I started digging big time into its its history, uh, local history, which then has become a, a big thing with me. Uh, opened a heritage centre uh, in an old Tudor grammar school uh, where all of Derby, not just Derby's, but some very famous, world famous boys went to school. There was a ghost in it. And I thought, well, being chairman of Derby Tourism, you know, what, what can I do to attract people to Derby? Well, York do ghost walks. Chester do ghost walks. Why don't I try doing a ghost walk? Uh, that was 20, 29 years ago in, in January. Um, and to be honest with you, the first one I did, I thought, this is a load of rubbish. 
rubbish. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. If, if you see, I'm a what's the word? I'm, not, I'm a seeker of the truth. I'm a yeah, I, and and the the silly stories that I'd sort of looked up and read and you know, no, 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 I can't, I can't do this. So I stopped. I did. I only did one, and then I stopped for about six yeah. months, um, and did rather a lot of research uh, into what you know, credible ghost stories. I think's the word that 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 you can verify to a certain extent with history, and the two go together, and. Yeah. That's when I changed it and it started then and it just went bonkers, <laughs> mad, uh, uh, yeah, uh, really. Um, and that eventually had Derby declared the most haunted city in Great Britain with York and Chester joint second. Come on, guys. Uh, and this was in print. You know, it was in the Sun newspaper. <laughs> amongst other right. newspapers. <laughs> and other newspapers, honestly. But, you know, so it was yeah. in print. So that's it. You know, it, it's it's in print. It's real. Um, and that's how it that's how it started and then progressing i suppose progressing from no I'll tell you what happened next i then opened derby heritage i did that we've done that bit i then opened derby jail because that was one of the most haunted buildings in in derby um and i used to take people in there uh on ghost walks and that sort of stuff and then i got a phone call from the 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 owners it was a nightclub at the time very seedy nightclub at the time uh, and they they were doing a moonlight they were going and and i found out that the bouncers that used to frequent it late at night after for want of a better word after they'd been bouncing <laughs> um, um we're going to turn it into a strip club okay and I thought, no, no way this no. can't happen i need to take this on and and turn it back to what it was in 1756 when it opened um so i took that on it took me 18 months to to do that one up to to get it looking like it does like it does now uh and then well that's it and then of course you know there from there uh, i got a i don't know it was a letter or a phone call from this company called antics productions uh wanting to know if i uh, uh, they could come and do a night, uh, you know, a TV program at uh, Derby Jail, right? Which, of course, I said yes. <laughs> you can probably yeah. imagine. And thank you for the seven hundred and fifty pounds uh, fee for coming and filming. <laughs> um, and that's how that that's how it started, actually. Um, right. And basically, what what happened? I spent the night, obviously, there with them, as, uh, and um, I remember the cross moving on the on the bed uh, on the wooden bed and i was there and that was real um they were so excited about that cross and i, I think it moved about that much I yeah. that was it they were patting each other the bed, whooping jumping up and down i thought is this it is this as good as it gets um and they were so because that was that was genuine um there's no doubt about it um and away they went that was it and a few few weeks later i got a phone call from yvette Saying, could Carl and Stuart come back, come back to Derby, come and see you, have a meeting with you? Wow. So I said, yep, yeah, yeah, of course you can, yeah. Um, they have a proposition for you. Uh, they came back and, and basically Carl said to, to me, uh, as the proprietor of the building and as a witness to, because I saw a ghost in there, as you, everybody, the world must know yeah. that by now. Um, and having seen a ghost, then, then I should have had a two minute slot on the show. But he said to me, but after 20 minutes, we just did not know where to edit it. Would you like a job? Gotcha. Um, the rest is most haunted history. Yeah. It was an amazing show at the beginning. That's what got me into paranormal, oh, in a way. Most people. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt. There's no doubt in my mind, as I've said so many times, that programme created more argument, more debate, more discussion, and more research than any program, any ghost program has in the whole history, not of the world, but in the whole history of ghost programs. Um, yeah. And of course, they set, they set the scene. They started it. E everything since, we wouldn't be talking now if it was, wasn't for Most Haunted. The guys that are listening to us now, I am sure mo w wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for Most Haunted. Um, That's right. and there's no doubt about it. 
and and all of your your whatever you uh, ghost adventures and whatever they're all they're all based on most haunted they're all following most haunted still yeah it made me realize i could go on a ghost hunt and I did my yeah. first ghost hunt at Derby Jail. Oh, did you? I didn't yeah. know that. I had my first paranormal experience there. Oh, I never but knew that. That was with Jason Carl. Goodness me. Yeah. It wasn't the night of the fire, was it? No. 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 Oh, there was, a, there was a fire. We had the strangest event in the condemned cell. Um, there, was, there was a dummy. We had a dummy in there uh, dressed as a prisoner and uh a wooden a wooden stool and of course that bed the the original bed that was is, is a prison bed really genuine and um the one that the cross moved on and um to this day nobody knows how but um the dummy caught fire as did the wooden stool the oak stool that was there and they burnt actually to cinders and never touched the bed the bed did not burn. We had the fire brigade. We had to. It was the night that Jason Carl was doing an event there. Oh, okay. And luckily, I'd come in early, and I, I God knows what, come in and in, and the, the, there was a fire in the condemned cell. Gosh. And we had a fire engine, the works, um, <laughs> and and the, I've still got the report somewhere from the fire brigade. No, no explanation for the fire. That's amazing. From the fire brigade. But then I went to the jail more recently. I'm not, I'm not meaning, you know, the last time I came. Mm. And um, I did that past life regression. Oh, yes. And a candle fell over on someone's jacket. And they, there's no, no explanation for that one. The guy no. wasn't even near it. No, and, so, and another one, another one that happened only three weeks ago when Karin Basant was there. Um, I came in and um, clicked on the, the red switch that gets the power on in the kitchen and noticed that the oven was on. And it's not possible. It couldn't, well, nobody put the oven on. So I said, oh, my God, the oven, the oven's goodness, good job. You know, obviously, I heard it, see, switched the oven off and went outside, uh, actually cutting up some wood outside for Kareen for, for, for her night vigil that she was doing there, gets this scream, Richard, quick, come in, the kettle's on fire. Uh, and I came screaming in. Uh, one of the, the kettle, which has got a, a plastic base, was actually on the, on the cooker, which was wrong, by the way, but it was on the cooker. And mm. not only the oven had been switched on, but one of the hobtops was on. No and of course, I didn't notice that when I switched the oven off. It was quite fine. I had to, I had to use a fire blanket to put it no out. You, you need know, to find it could have been then. very serious. Do you think so, it's one particular spirit causing that then? I, I don't know. <clears throat> but it's quite strange that luckily we've got lots and lots of um, um, fire extinguishers. and so It's a good job as well, isn't it? But, well, uh, you need it with that person yeah, around. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, quite strange. Yeah. I really can't explain it. It's a typical. It's actually it's a bit serious, but it's typical sort of poltergeist, you know, energy type type thing. But uh, no explanation for any of those three incidents. None at all. Yeah. That's absolutely amazing. I've got it so is. many people yeah. watching. I give a shout out to a few. I can't do this for everyone, but we've got Marie Davis. Hello, Marie. We've got Gina Sugden, Hello, Gina. we've got <laughs> Phil Newton. Hey, up, Phil, how are you doing? We've got Julie Nicholas, Dean Buckley, Anne Arlington Gilbert, Gina Murphy, Brenton Emma, Sue Babham. Thanks for watching, everyone. Sarah Edwards, Sarah Louise Picks. Yeah, <laughs> so and if you've got any Tom questions, uh, Jay Rayleigh, and thanks Tom for watching. <laughs> yeah, great day. Yeah, so um, what do you think of ghosts then? Say again. What do you think of ghosts? What do I think of ghosts? <laughs> what do I, I think saw you face the other day. When oh, we did the I, think think thing. I, I think that, that we need to change the name from ghosts to energy. 
That's yeah. the first thing we need to do. And, and and you know only too well from listening to him that you know that the word ghost just means to be frightened of. Um, so it's just a word that we use for things that we still don't understand. And that's yeah. all down to energy. You know, I'm sure that what, however those fires started in there, they were caused by energy. Um, things that move uh, on their of their own accord, be it a gun, call them ghosts, obviously. Uh, it's energy that moves it. Um, anything that appears, it, it, it appears because of energy. Um, the whole damn thing is, is energy. And in my opinion, ghosts are energy. Um, you, your consciousness, your, your, your energy, your ego, your personality, your mind, you are energy. Um, yeah. And that energy is contained inside in, in a vessel that is solid that also becomes energy. Well, this is energy, but that actually becomes uh, fertilizer for daffodils. The body, <laughs> that's the vessel, yeah. the vessel that actually holds the energy, your mind. Yeah. Your, yeah. And that's all throughout. And I think that that's what goes on. The energy that has left the body and go somewhere but please please don't ask me where because <laughs> no, I, 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 I haven't got that far yet i'm working <laughs> on it i'm definitely working on it but that's what the whole damn thing's about it's an energy thing uh, yeah. and, and we're frightened because we don't understand it uh in the same way uh i actually i'm working on a um, tv program at the moment six part tv series all about the Ark of the Covenant, um, yeah. which is going to be on yesterday channel. Which, well, it's actually going to America. It's going to the Discovery Channel of America, and it's then, then it will be edited again, and and uh, it'll be on yesterday channel. Uh, and the stuff that I'm, you know, because it's all, you know, that oh, I'm not going to get involved in this particular <laughs> the the Bible, for instance. You know, three thousand years ago or whatever. You know, when. It, we're talking about so you know, the stuff that happened then, three thousand years ago. Um, it, we we can now explain wasn't the supernatural that they thought it was then. Um, mm -hmm. And without going into all the details of the Ark of the Covenant, basically what it was was God in a box, and it was some form because the, the Egyptians had some some way they they were very clever because they actually had light bulbs. They were okay. into electricity. And so you have a box that's got, uh, it's a, a big, it was a big capacitor, a battery of some sort. And on the top of it had two angels, cherubims as they're called, with their, and they were gold. And their two, their wings were very close together like that. And somehow, and I don't ask me how yet, if you've got a charge going through it, and it, for want of a better word, arc, you've got a spark going across from the two. That, can you imagine that was magic? Yeah. That was God in a box. Fantastic. I don't know. And that's the same thing today. We still we're in the Middle Ages, guys, with ghosts. Yeah. We're still there. We're we still um, you know, energy, you know, I mean most poltergeist um cases, most, not all, are to do with energy, pre I can't even say it, prepubescent <laughs> children that have got what I always refer to as as the Kevin and Perry syndrome. Oh, got, wow. You know, they hate the parents, they do this, they're not, you know, they want to go out and mum's telling them to pull that skirt down a bit and and <laughs> yeah, and, and oh, I hate my parents. And this energy from them causes things to happen, including little fires sometimes see in the bedroom, things to fly across the room. We you know, we but it's a ghost. No, it's not. <laughs> it's an energy, it's a different. I like your um, stone tape theory. Oh, well, that. yes. That's absolutely that's, amazing. Yeah, I had uh, a couple, because I did my um, face, FaceTime Live last night, and I was on a little bit about it last night, and I had one or two uh, very interesting comments back from people, uh, a couple of guys that are actually wanting to help me with making a uh, an imp another type of machine uh, that we can perhaps use um, in some way to to try and well, try and get an image to come out of the out of the out of the wall um 
But again, you see, that's a, you see back to, you know, as I've, you know, you've heard me so often say, you know, 60 percent <laughs> of ghosts, I believe, to be a recording held in the fabric of the building. But you you take take it back. Take us back 100 and 130 years, something like that. 1880 or 1890, something like that. Um, could you imagine if you showed uh, if you put a projector on the wall and showed showed people an image of Queen Victoria? Yeah. Can, you, can you imagine that the fear that it's, it's again yeah. it's the image of a dead person? That's right. Actually, that's the wrong time because she'd still have been alive then. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, just, all right, 19, yeah. 1904, right? And you right. put that image on the wall. Uh, wow. What would people have thought? Well, actually, they did have images then. I'm, I'm going to have to go back more. Right, hang on a minute. Right, let's go, <laughs> let's go, back, let's go back to 1870, and then you show someone an image of King George III, who'd been dead for 70-odd years. What would they have thought of it then? It was yeah. a ghost. It's the image of a dead person. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. You know, um, I like it. But I get, you know, I get ridiculed for it, of course, by people. But I, I think I'm onto something. I really do. I like the theory. I really do. And like when you've sort of gone through the stone tape theory yeah. in detail, yeah. it does make sense. It, it does make sense. It, it does really does. Make sense. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, because images don't interact with you like that. That's the whole point. That's why it walks through the wall or walks through the room or whatever the image does, and it doesn't acknowledge you. It doesn't even look at you. It, it because because the same thing applied with if we were to you know put a, a John Wayne film on, you know he he wouldn't you know he, he wouldn't he wouldn't speak to you. He wouldn't say I was so and so and stick kettle on love. I'll pop out the screen and I'll have a cup of tea with you and I'll get back to I'll get back to the film again because he's a, he's nothing more than a record. He's dead. He's a recording that's held, held in his television on a on a DVD or something yeah. like that, you know, or a tape. Um, and it's the same thing that I think. But don't remember that's only sixty percent. I still believe that forty percent are ghosts, ghosts, spirits, <laughs> souls, entities, intelligence, yeah. an energy that's left the body and for some reason hasn't hasn't gone to wherever they should go to. Um, yeah. Because at the end of the day. I don't believe that they're up there. Right. I also don't believe that they're down there. Yeah. I think they're here. I yeah. think they're around us at all times. Uh, but, of course, on another dimension, another frequency, another vibration, another spiritual plane, another spiritual level, another something, but are around and can communicate if they wish to, if we're yeah. in trouble, if grandma never saw the grandkids and comes back and sees them. That's that sort of stuff, I think. But there's, I've got no proof of it, none whatsoever. You can't get proof, can you? It's so difficult. No, no well, that's you know, the, the big one. But I must say, very, very, very interesting one. Um, I was doing an event, I was doing a, this thing called Dining with the Dead, which is a dinner. Uh, dinner and ghost stories and and peter and gina sugden were at the at dinner and i made this comment and i said guys i can tell you quite honestly there is no proof that ghosts exist and peter said but there's no proof that they don't exist true isn't it yeah there is I no proof that ghosts don't exist is there no. You find me a scientist and say, come on then, prove they don't exist. Well, you can't see the air you breathe, can you? No. You know it exists. No. You breathe yeah, exactly. it, can't you? You can't see the wind, can you? Only in the trees when they move. But no, Only when they not. move. But yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. But honestly, but there is, no pr there is no proof that ghosts exist. Nobody has ever, I, don't, I defy anybody. You know, they can tell me anything they want. They can tell me they've seen this, they've heard this, they've felt that, they've smelt that, they've, they've heard this, they've got this picture and that picture. And uh, But at the end of the day, that there's no proof. Yeah, that's what I like about it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh you're so right. Because, you know, once we prove it, that's the end of it. I'll be out of the job. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, if you've seen it, you know. 
Sorry? A lot of people, if you've seen something or experienced something, oh, yeah. you know of its existence. But if you don't, then you think we're all crazy. But yeah. It's yeah. I mean, you you know, I've, well, I know, you know, lots of people that I've seen a ghost in yeah. garbage up. But I can't prove it. I have no, I, I, I can't prove it. And I am still being the skeptical sort of person I am, still looking for another answer. Yeah. We've had a great I've, question here. Yeah. This is from Liz. I'll just put it up on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Liz. I put my glasses on. <laughs> so, does Richard believe the field will ever become true science? Yes. Today's magic will be tomorrow's science. Simple as that. Yes, it will. But the problem I have at the moment, and we have, is that science doesn't really want to know. Uh, and one of the, there are, I'll tell you what reasons there are. I mean, me, for instance, um, fantastic. Thank you, Most Haunted. You know, four and a half years on Most Haunted. Loved every minute of it. Yeah, but but because of Most Haunted, I, if, if I tried to speak to science about it, they would say, oh, it's that silly man off Most Haunted. Oh, yeah. it's that silly man that does ghost walks. Because on ghost walks, we normally, not at the moment, we scare you to death. You know, we have jump around. <laughs> People come out for a night out. They love being scared. And that's what we do for them. Uh, and they love it. Um, we don't never do that on night vigils or anything like that, because that's, that's for real. But ghost walks, you know, they get the stories, the history. And um, we scare them. And they love it. Same with Most Haunted. They scare you all the time you know because they believe that if you weren't scared you switch off which is probably true actually yeah um but that's not the reality behind ghosts and no, that's why that's i had true. to go from most haunted um because i i knew that or i knew that that program would eventually Wow, after God, how many series? 15? I, I don't know, a lot. Phenomenal, incredible. Um, but it's you know, it started to lose credibility yeah. early on. <laughs> <laughs> right, that brings us nicely to a book. Now, you're currently putting a book together of people's stories. Yeah, it's done. It's done. Oh, it's yeah. fantastic. When's it out then? Done and dusted. It's gone to the printers now. Wow. Um, and it will be available. It's it's it, I have to say it is quite you see, this is this is and I actually say this in the preface of the book. This book is the proof that ghosts exist. Mm -hmm. Right. And the reason that is, is because after, over the last 29 years of me talking to people, because, as you know, everybody talks on, you know, on the night vigils we do, on the talks, the dinners, the ghost walks. Everybody talks to me. Everybody tells me their ghost story. <laughs> um, and I've had so much from people now that I know only too well that there has to be something in it. It is real. Um, because their accounts, and I refer to them as accounts <laughs> rather than stories, are so similar to those that, you know, as I've said so often, you know, the lady that was, I don't know, I was talking to from Edinburgh three weeks ago, uh, telling me so sim such a story so similar to the person last Thursday night in Derby. Yeah. Or the guy in, in Ireland that I was telling me a story, and that's so similar to the story that someone told me in Leicester. That they're... they're they're not the same stories, accounts, but they sound the same. Yeah. Because it's dealing with you know, and and the way they tell them, you know, yeah. You know, I mean, because honestly, you know, there are some people, some some accounts are, you know, some people have <laughs> made, made it. Some some of them are overtired. Some of them are drunk. Some of them are completely crackers. Um, <laughs> some of them are making it up, and some are mistaken. But on the whole, the accounts that I've had from people are. I know from the way they're told and what they are that they're in. Um, there's no, and so that's what we've done in the book. I asked we about eight nine months ago for your, the people's, ghost stories, that are 
Yeah, you know, and I refer to them as in the stories from Joe Public. Yeah. Which that which they are. They're not they're not written by famous ghostwriters like Lord Halifax or or Edgar Allan Poe or you know stories that have been made up or M. R. James, fantastic ghost stories, scary ghost stories. These are from the horse's mouth. These are from the people that saw them, sensed them, heard them, felt them and smelt them. Not yeah. no, I mean I mean, you know, not not I mean, Lord Halifax, for instance, uh, fantastic ghost books, but they're all account stories that he'd been told by other people. These, yeah. are, these are from, these are first hand. And I think that's what makes it so credible. And of course, the best of it is we've decided, of course, that we're calling this one volume one. Right, okay. Because there's well, thousands more out yeah. there. Uh, and hopefully, when, so yeah, it's uh, it's out. Uh, it'll be out by the end of the week, I believe. Uh, and will be, will be be available from uh, richardfelix.co.uk on the shop. Uh, there's yeah. going to be a, a Kindle version as well, um, and it will also be available from Amazon. That's brilliant. I'll put a link up onto your web page anyway. Oh, that'd be great. Well, that'd be know, great. And of course, doing well? yeah, doing and the, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm butting in there. Uh, and then the other one, of course, is that I've also we've just redone uh, my What is a Ghost book, which I did 12 years ago, because if you can imagine how much I've learned in the last 12 years compared to when I wrote it. So we've we've upgraded it big time. Uh, and this is now called What is a Ghost? Supernatural or Science? And that's available on richardfelix.co.uk. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. Dying copies available. I want a copy of something you've got on Annesley Hall, the DVD. I've got to sort that one out. Yeah, no, but which? Oh, Annesley. Oh, yes. I'll, uh, the yeah, most I'll amazing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's that. so amazing. I actually met you there, and yes. I'll do it. It's horrendous night. Loads of people turned up. Hundreds yeah. of people just turned up. Hundreds. And Hundreds. it was mad. <laughs> it was. I, I, just, I miss Annesley Hall so much. Yeah, it was, oh, was such fantastic. a good. It was a very cold and windy and drafty <laughs> place, uh, but it it one of my one of my favourite haunts, for want of a better word. Um, but of course, obviously, with with it not being available anymore, I did the DVD, Ghosts yeah. of Annesley Hall. Yeah, with okay. again with accounts from people actually experienced things there. It's a yeah. stonking DVD, it really is. Available. Oh, brilliant. Richard Felix, UK. <laughs> <laughs> is that nine ninety nine? <laughs> it is. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Get All a free right, sign picture question, with it. Then. Yes. Okay. So, Kate Day, thanks for watching. Uh, where has been the most haunted location you have visited? Uh, she remembers Pendle Hill. Yeah, that was awesome, wasn't it? Pendle Hill was was quite something. The, well, I mean, I, it's got, I'm afraid it has to be, obviously, the Tower of London. But, oh, but of course, wow. I, when I, yeah, it's got to be. The, it has to be, in my humble opinion, probably the most haunted place in the world. Everyone wants to go there. thousand years of history. And the amount of ghost stories, the amount of terror, torment, torture, anguish, <laughs> pain execution that went on in that building in that hole that is is second to none in my opinion yeah, that's right. but of course you <coughs> you can't do a ghost hunt no uh yet one day perhaps but that we do to love be. to get in there we'll have to have a word with the queen and see what she'd say yeah um, she'll forget mind <laughs> yeah. you never or perhaps perhaps uh the prince of wales because i mean um He's he's actually got a haunted house, you know, up in Scotland. All right. Oh yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. And funnily, enough, yeah, yeah. Uh, Camilla actually was frightened of the house he bought, and I've actually got a story in me. What is a ghost book? Because uh, what I've done at the end of the book. Uh, here we go again. It's not not a plug. This is just <laughs> a, just of interest, I think. I, I've always thought that it would be a really nice idea to compile a book of ghost stories from credible people, like doctors. Ambulance drivers, um, yeah. Winston, yeah, that's Winston Churchill, um, uh, that sort of thing. And so I've compiled, there's about 15 or 20 um, 
ghost stories at the end of the book um, from credible people, wow. including including the Duchess of Cornwall and wow. her story her story about Prince Charles's house that he he bought, you know, and Winston Churchill who saw the ghost of Abraham Lincoln in the White House. Wow, that, that's like incredible it? people, you know, they're not going to make things up like that, are they? Oh, that's right. It's not something you'll come out with, is it? If you're I don't think so. I genuinely yeah. don't think so. Um, Sting, um, sorry, ghost. Um, oh, all sorts of famous people, yeah, uh, that have seen ghosts. Um, uh, Princess Leah of Most Haunted, Most Haunted of uh, Star <laughs> of Your Fool. Well, they're similar, aren't they? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's in that's in the What is a Ghost book at the end of it. Well, I suppose yeah. we should have put it in it. We should actually have put them in the people's ghost book, shouldn't we? Yeah, the people. <laughs> They're people. Famous people. Never mind. That's right. The famous people's ghost book. Yeah. Yeah. That's another one. Well, but you I want. Just, I just think to be able to do it from, you know, credible people like ambulance drivers and surgeons yeah. and people, that sort of thing that, have, uh, that would never make, well, would never make. But then again, Here's one. What? Why would anybody make up a, a, a story about a ghost? What? What? What have they got to? That's the big ones. What has anybody got to gain from making up a ghost story? They haven't. No. Why do it? Why? 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 Why make a fool of yourself for want of a big years ago? Anyway, because yeah. people used to laugh at people years ago. You know. Now they don't because of most haunted. Uh, you know, the ghost business now has changed. You know, people are not frightened to tell the story for fear of being ridiculed. Yeah, that's But they were thing. years ago. Um, so why would you, why would anybody make up a ghost story for the sake of it? They're not yeah. going to get anything out of it. Interesting, that. Yeah, that's true. This mm. is a, another question for you then. Yeah. This is from Barry Frankish. He asks, what are your thoughts on Dr. Brian Cox's view that ghosts simply don't and cannot exist? Well, I like Brian Cox. Or I used to I like do. Brian Cox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all I can say is he is a typical scientist. It's as simple as that. Because I, I, I presume, I presume <laughs> that Dr. Brian Cox doesn't know the the word ghost means just to be frightened of <laughs> yeah and yeah. that 60 percent of them are nothing more than a recording that we call a ghost and the other the other 40 percent are an energy that is within the body and and he can't as a scientist he can't dispute that because the first law of thermodynamics is is it is E equals MC squared and all that sort of stuff? Because remember, I left school at 15. <laughs> I hate <laughs> science. Uh, but, you know, first law of thermodynamics, you, cannot, you can neither create or destroy energy. You can alter its state. And that's what happens to the energy that is you. You alter its state. It becomes a ghost. <laughs> a thing that we're frightened of. Yeah, that's yeah? true. Yeah. I'd love to meet him. I'd love to have a discussion with him. I'll send him a copy of the book. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> what is a ghost, supernatural or science? That's the book for him. That'd be an amazing conversation, though. Wouldn't yeah. it? Wouldn't it? Yeah. He'd yes. Sure to now you thought. That now you I mean, don't get me wrong. He'd, he'd probably absolutely trounce me because he's a, you know, he's a, he's a, he's an academic. <laughs> I'm far from it. But I just think I've come up with some rational, rational explanations as to what this ghost business is all about. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Has anybody got any more questions then? I think we probably can get one or two more questions in. Uh, we've not got long left. It's, it's flying time, tonight, Richard. Doesn't time fly when you're having fun? Oh, it definitely does. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Richard Martinez. Hi, Jeff Bai. Um, Jeff Bai says all energy eventually becomes heat due to adiabatic drift. I beg your pardon? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. How are we doing? We need to talk, Jeffrey. Jeffrey's creating me a machine. There you go. Might, that might well. I can't even. I can't even say it, Jeff. Yeah, and adi adiabatic. Yeah, you need mean. to explain that one to me. 
Uh, but yeah, basically, Jeff's <laughs> making me a machine that creates EMF. Wow. That can okay. possibly alter alter the uh, frequencies or vibrations in your brain, which might might just be able. Because here's the big one. You see, um, my thoughts at the moment are. And I think I said this again, was it last night? I'd like to know what sort of frame of mind the person was when they saw a ghost. Had yeah. they had an argument? Had their local football team beaten another lo another football team 5-0? Yes, uh, Forest had stuff Derby, yeah. That sort of stuff. You're yeah. so elated, you're so excited by what's happened that the vibrations or the, the frequencies or whatever in your brain, your mind or wherever changes and something comes in that you actually see that is on the same frequency as what your brain change changes to perhaps yeah. perhaps yeah carl hudson says get brian cox to spend a night out with jail alone <laughs> so change his well that's a possibility that'd be that amazing really wasn't it by the way I'm, I'm yeah i'm being challenged at the moment to to spend a night in derby jail on my own Never really? done it, you know. Mm, never done it. Wow. No, to raise to raise money for teenage cancer trust. Oh, that's um, fantastic. Well, I don't know whether it's <laughs> or not. I'm not. I'm not so sure. I'm really yeah. not. Really, I mean, you know, you know all about me. You know, I'm frying the guys. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> and I have a. And this is real. This is absolutely always has been. Uh, but of course, taking it to stage farther. And I've talked to this before, and perhaps I should get it go. We really need to get something sorted out where we, where we raise a lot of money, and and some and and the world, the world, uh, the 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 ghost hunting world nominates the most haunted, the scariest place on earth for me to spend the night alone. <laughs> Jesus, you have to get through Derby Jail first, though. I'll do that first, I think, because that's that's trivia compared to. Things like the Mackenzie Poltergeist in in Greyfriars Churchyard, <gasps> or or um, Lep Castle in the Oubliette of Lep Castle, or, or oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't. Anyway, Gillian, we'll see. Gillian Murphy actually mentioned Lep Castle. Yeah, there you are. Is Gillian on? <laughs> yeah, she is. She's Hello, watching. Gillian. Yeah, invited and, to Lep um, Castle. I know all about it, kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Got a question from Gina. Who would Richard have dinner with that's passed over already in chat with them? Oh, golly, 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 golly. There's so many uh, <laughs> heroes that I've got. I'd love to have a, a, a discussion with General Custer, Custer's last stand, and find yeah. out uh, what what how, what silly mistake he made. Uh, I'd love to speak to Captain Smith of the Titanic. Oh, boy, why did you put your foot down so much, mate? <laughs> um i'd love to speak to uh oh god oh there's so many actually um uh, that's passed over um but i think of, of all of them I, I would like to have a conversation with captain lewis edward nolan who was the man that was responsible for the charge of the light brigade wow. who reputedly pointed in the wrong direction and set, sent 673 british cavalrymen uh down the valley of death with cannons on three sides yeah. of them that's it's unreal isn't it how can you do that well he did well did he yeah he, he I, did that's what i asked him yeah. what a, oh, the question boy. isn't it that yeah. would be you know did you really fling your arm in that direction and say <laughs> there my lord is your enemy there are your guns i don't know i don't know yeah that's the one oh, right. i could have, have, have a big table and, and invite them all <laughs> <laughs> well it looks like you're invited to visit HAPRC in Hinkley and not. bring your merchandise and yes you, I've not done it me. and I must uh, you must because you know, I've been invited and I could still do it because we, we, we can still do it with um, uh, I mean we're not in lockdown are we as such we can, you're not. can come into shops and, and Hinkley's not is it it's less no. sure, isn't it Nottingham's dodgy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's in you, okay? It always has been. <laughs> no, it does <laughs> Just me to say that to you. <laughs> but 
had to do the one about football, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd love to come. Love to come. Um, get in touch with me. Is she gone. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Get in touch with me, and I'll and I'll come and do a book. We'll we'll bring books. Do a book signing, a DVD signing. Bring yeah. the ghosts along and and one or two other bits and bobs, and do a book signing and love to. Absolutely love to because I've never yeah. been. We'll sort something out and uh, some amazing items in there. I just yeah. love a place. Perhaps before Christmas, actually, if pause. Yeah, fingers crossed. But we'll we'll sort something out. Well, yeah, yeah. that would yeah. be great. I'd love to love to do that. That'd be amazing, going to Anne. Yeah, okay, on a Saturday. Uh... <laughs> hey, masks will be. I say on a Saturday. I would have thought be as good as anything, wouldn't it? Yeah, they're available. Um, it's open on a Saturday. I think it's ten till four. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd, love to, I'd love to come and do a book that, signing. That would be absolutely awesome. Yeah. Now, I've got a question from Daniel Hopkins here. Now, yes. Daniel actually met you at the village Hi, of ESP. He wants to know what your thoughts are on mediums and psychics. Oh. <laughs> what, what are my thoughts on mediums and psychics? Uh what I mean, a long, long time ago, someone said to me, do you believe in mediums and psychics? And I said, I believe in ghosts. So I have to believe in mediums and psychics. But yeah. I believe, like in most professions, there are a lot of charlatans. In, in most, there are an awful lot of charlatans in the banking world. For a start, <laughs> yeah, uh, amongst and there are, uh, and so you know, it's the same old story. Um, there are there are people out there that profess to be, but of course, I believe in mediums and and and, and psychics, um, because I believe they have a gift in the same way as somebody who can play the piano but can't read music, someone that is unbelievably fantastic at, at maths you know that can add up oh you know absolutely don't need a computer can do the most incredible things i can't but the difference between a medium and someone that can play the piano that can't read music is that that person can prove they can play the piano because they lift yeah. the lid and start playing a tune without having any music with them the medium can't bring your granddad to you no. that's the problem with so it's back to the same Physical. old thing that we started with that there is that you can't actually prove it yes you can give you can give incredible information that nobody would know about other than the person that they're talking to and to be honest with you that will be enough proof for that person that's listening but not enough proof for anybody else because we're we're, we're all doubting thomas's but yes, of course, I believe in psychics and mediums. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I believe it to be a gift. Uh, I believe we all have that. We all have that ability, but most of us will never realise it. In the same way as we actually all have the ability to play the piano without reading music. But it'll never happen. <laughs> never happen to me. But you, you do have the ability. You must have. Otherwise, you know, one person shouldn't be able to do it and you can't. But so you have the ability, but you'll never be able to do it. Yeah, Not you can work. press the odd key, but you're never going yes. to sound. Yes, you'd never be able yeah. to do what so many people can do. But you know, it's just an incredible gift, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Same thing. So, yes, I do believe in mediums. That's cool. I believe in spooks as well. I do, I do. I do believe in spooks. <laughs> What's this one? It's from Simon Wilkie. He's been enjoying this year's Richard Felix calendar. Will there be a new one available soon? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're working on it now. That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, the, cal the calendar's on the way. Um, it's going to be, well, of course, it's going to be different again. There's going to be different, of course, there's going to be different stuff on it. Uh, but we are actually doing it as as we, not not at this moment, but we were doing working on it this week. It'll be out in in. It'll be out before the end of October. It will. That's brilliant. So, yeah. Looking forward to just one or two more pictures we're doing at the moment. Interesting oh, ones, cool. different ones. We've got a picture of me on a tractor and a picture of me with 
my donkey and my alpaca and my pony and all sorts of oh, things. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's going to be oh, different. Brilliant. Yeah. That's all right. But, I was going to put a comment up, but I wasn't quite sure. But so I went. Yeah. I think I think it disappeared. That was it. Oh, there you go. Hello, John. How are you doing? Oh, so basically, this is about the mediumship side of things. So basically, as you get older, you sort of close things off. That's Natalie's idea of it. Well, I think that's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. children. Children could me, I'll tell you. Things, Sorry? Children could sometimes see things, but as they get older. Yeah, well, yeah, but I think that's also down to the fact that you, you cram your brain with other things. You know, as a child, your mind is so open because there's very little in it. As we progress, we cram more. And, and you remember, you can't go down to PC World and uh, get more memory in the same way as you do with the computer this has to cope with all of it and more so it obviously pushes to the back things that we used to be able to do as children and can't do now yeah. and that is includes seeing ghosts yeah amy amy says she's from the center to believe no proof is necessary to a non-believer no proof no, is possible that's correct so right that's and it brilliant. is true yeah and there are an awful lot of non-believers out there yeah awful lot of non-believers um and you know i i understand it uh because nobody's ever come up with any proof but nobody's ever come up any proof about that bloke up there in the sky either uh no, <laughs> they? Hey, no. why is he a bloke by the way <laughs> Who knows? Let's not get into that one tonight. No, we're not. not we haven't got time for that. <laughs> and uh, here's a question from Marie Davis. Hello, Marie. Um, do you think Rourke's Drift is haunted? That's a very, very good question. I, I desperately, desperately want to do a series, TV series, called Battlefield Ghosts. Um, and uh, Rourke's Drift, uh, uh, like so many places, um, I, I think I think all battlefields are haunted because I believe that that they are the most underestimated haunted sites on the planet. Because years ago, of course, the only people that ever went on the battlefield was the farmer uh, and the, the man walking his dog. Hmm. But nowadays, of course, with reenactment taking place in so many places, you know, on the anniversary of the battle, there's so many more people there on the on the site, and they. They see. If you think of the amount of emotion, energy that is used during a battle, the fear, the the um, the exhilaration, the 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 trauma, the pain, the anguish, uh, and death, of course, on a on a big scale, that energy that is on every battlefield, I I think is is held. Obviously, not 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 in the. In, it depends if it's a castle, then in the brickwork, the stonework. But if if it's a, uh, a an open battlefield, then usually I think held probably in the water, in the soil, especially if it's clay, which of course is silica with iron oxide in it. And yes, I think the Orcs Rift as I think every battlefield's got ghosts on it, and I'd yes. love to do a battlefield ghost series. One day, if I live long enough. So, um, Amy says, get Richard up to Bosworth Battlefield and Edge Hill. Yeah, I've done both of them. Uh, I, I did um, Bosworth on uh, Ghosts of Leicestershire. Uh, for, that was the opening piece on Leicestershire Ghosts. Oh, wow. And uh, Edge Hill, of course, because that is a fascinating story. Because Edge Hill was fought in a, um, an electric storm. And after the battle, uh, some... Um, shepherds were getting in their sheep and they actually saw the battle being reenacted sort of right. in the sky and uh terrified them as you can imagine went to the magistrates the magistrates were brought out they saw it as well uh, eventually the story got to king charles the first who at the time was in oxford and he's actually sent some of his officers to investigate and they saw it as well and they actually recognised some of the 
participants, some of the soldiers, who weren't dead. Okay. So it was a recording. The battle somehow became recorded because of the electric storm. Energy. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a right. real story. It's an incredible story, that. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris got a disembodied hello growl down his ear at Bosworth. Wow. Um, Liz also got um, some good EVPs there as well. Oh, really? So, yeah. Um, and also, you just have to pay for parking. Then you just free to roam, aren't you? It's a great place. I love Say it. Say that again, though. I miss that. You just have to pay for parking. You can just oh, roam. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, fascinating. But yeah, I'm me obviously being in into battles and soldiers and I that battlefields big time. Probably the most haunted battlefield on the planet, of course, is Gettysburg in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh which I did do. I visited that. I've actually I did some recording uh for an opening piece for for Battlefield Ghosts. Um but I never brought it out. Oh. I've actually done uh and this uh, Gwen Gwen Acora will kick me, kick my ass for this. Um, about nine years ago, me and Derek filmed a complete program on uh, Sedgemoor, uh, which is in uh, Somerset, uh, called Battlefield Goes. I oh. never brought, never brought it out. Oh, I've got no. some incredible footage of Derek on that film. Oh, never, never, never brought it out. I need to speak to Gwen about it. Yeah. I really do. Oh, wow. That would be incredible. Amazing, yeah. Yeah. One day. Um, One day. Yeah. Right, our time's come to the end. Oh, that's a shame. Thank you so quickly. But thanks very much. It's been absolutely it's been, amazing. It's been my pleasure. It's been most enjoyable. Loved it. <laughs> As you know, you can wind me up and keep me going all night. <laughs> oh, bless you. I'm good at that anyway. Hope to see you one day anyway. Uh, when Absolutely. I can get out yeah. Keep safe, everybody. Yeah, stay safe. Thanks for right. watching, everyone. The rules. Bye. <laughs> see you. Thank see you. you. Going on. Bye. Um, you just get back to the Hunted Antiques channel, and Neil and Jane will be on shortly. Thanks. Bye.